Continuing our road trip to the Northeast US, today we were headed to Acadia National Park to climb the infamous Beehive Loop Trail, a precarious 450 foot cliff trail that's nearly vertical in some sections with iron rung ladders. After that, we'd be exploring a bit more of Acadia before heading further into the Northeast. As we drove further north, more hills appeared on the horizon. Along with the hills, we began seeing water from the bays along the coast. We passed through Bar Harbor, the town on Mount Desert Island that leads to Acadia National Park. Now that we were in the park, we picked up a map and headed to the trailhead of the Beehive Mountain. So I haven't told the guys much about what this trail is going to be like, but um, Andrew and uh, Robbie's parents, I'm sorry. It's only a 1.6 mile hike. We followed a path along the road, which crossed over into a wooded hillside. Here, Thomas reviewed the plan for our hike. So the Beehive Trail, this is the Beehive Mountain right here. It's going to go very vertical, very fast for about a quarter of a mile. We're going to get to the top and then we're going to swing back down the other side and then walk back to the parking lot. All in all, less than two miles, but the first quarter of a mile is going to be a lot. It does feel really good to be moving. <laughs> it feels like the steps up to some ancient monastery or something, the way oh. the stones are placed. Yeah. While we were hiking, we could see flashes of color among the trees. We continued along a rocky surface, which had a steep slope in some areas that required caution to hike along. We got to a point in the trail where the climb up was about to become much more steep. Nearly vertical route. So I don't, how are you guys going to do this with cameras? <laughs> uh, I'm noticing a lot of plants that we often see in like Appalachian type regions, which makes sense. Uh, but there's some wintergreen with some berries growing down here. And then there's also what I've heard called Indian cucumber or like cucumber root growing over here. And that plant has these nice whorled leaves, so like the leaves grow all around the stem. And if you dig up the root and eat it, it's this nice little refreshing crunch. I also saw a Canada Mayflower growing nearby. So Thomas, you have not done this trail before, right? No, I've never been to Acadia before, period. Cool. But I've heard about this trail. I think a lot of people have heard about this trail. So love to get your guys' review on it. From here, the trail was definitely much steeper, and we started to see amazing views of the rest of the park from our vantage point. Far below us was a beach surrounded by rocky cliffs that had been beaten by ocean waves. It's funny, as we were walking up I heard a, like a classic bell of a buoy out in the distance. Mm. You can probably hear it now, but it's so quintessential New England right now. The trail now took us along the precarious edge of a rocky cliff as we hiked higher and higher up. We just get started. This is no joke. Steps had been cut out of the stone in some areas, but in others, we had to carefully step across metal ladders or scramble up rocks. Yeah, I might need to hand this off. <laughs> okay. Got it. This is like a bouldering trail more than a hiking trail. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's really cool. Holy crap, that's cool. There you go. Need to hand me something. Ooh, that's scary. <laughs> Get low. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a scary trail, man. We continued sliding along narrow ledges and climbing up metal rungs that had been rammed into the granite rock. Scrambling up a mountain like this, especially while you're holding extra equipment, is an exercise that requires patience. 
and sometimes a bit of teamwork. It was definitely a rugged trail to climb up, and in areas where there were no man-made handholds, nature provided assistance in its own way. If trees were not giving enough, this one is so critical to this trail. You can tell so many people have glazed the bark over with their oils by grabbing it. There's a bunch of sticks down here. Is this walking sticks? Oh, wow. People yeah. abandoning their walking sticks. <laughs> Got it. Along the trail, there were some interesting plants and fungi in the soil. So, growing in this area, I'm seeing these bushes with really bright red berries called bearberry. It's edible, but I've heard if you eat too much, it can induce like nausea and vomiting. And then here are some blueberry bushes, but we're way past season for the blueberries. Um, but I recognize them from seeing them on other trails. And then Thomas was asking about this. It looks like cauliflower just sticking out of the ground, but I think this is some sort of a young coral fungus that hasn't had time to like develop its full structure. There's actually another one right there. One. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, that is beautiful. It looks hard. It is kind of hard. I can't tell if it's like an edible variety or not. I know some of those are edible, but it does look like something I would want to like cook and eat. <laughs> Just stick it in my mouth. We continued up the trail and surveyed the land below us. It's interesting, by that pond, you see a lot more of these trees that are turning colors already. And I'm wondering if that's just, there tends to be more maples and, and other hardwood trees growing there. It's nice to see the fall colors though, that's awesome. We kept climbing higher and higher, and the trail seemed to only get more precarious. <laughs> Just always have your center of gravity leaning towards the wall. Yeah. The view below us became more and more expansive. We knew we were nearing the top when we looked down and saw flocks of seagulls flying below us. up here, there were persistent pine trees growing from the cracks in the rocks. Their sturdy roots reminded Andrew of our late grandfather. My grandpa on my dad's side was always obsessed with like the idea of a pine tree growing out of rock like this and just like the strength of the roots. And this, you can tell, is a very strong tree, especially in spite of everyone using it as a handhold on this scary path. Pine roots, nature's handhold. <laughs> We climbed even higher, and the precariousness of the trail reminded us of some of our past hikes. How, how does this compare to Angel's Landing so far? I feel much more comfortable on this one than I did on Angel's Landing, really? but this is much more vertical than Angel's Landing. That last bit on Angel's Landing looked nerve-wracking. Oh, I mean, you're, it's a thousand foot drop rather yeah. than a couple hundred. So when you fall down on this one, you'll break all your bones before you die. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Biggest problem with Angel's Landing is how crowded it was. There were so many people that it felt more precarious because you had to wait for other people to go by. But here, this is a lot more comfortable because there's plenty of room to rest and spread out yeah. like we are. It looks like we're past most of the vertical climbing, yeah. at least like the extremely vertical climbing, so. This part's kind of like Red River Gorge or something. It's like Red River Gorge if you take away all the land and replace it with the ocean. <laughs> Let's keep going. I'm looking and seeing some rain over there, so I want to get off of here. We were near the top now, but distant rain clouds had us concerned. We continued on, and eventually the granite rock flattened out as we reached the top of Beehive Mountain. Luckily for us, our way back down would be much more relaxed. The beehive was formed by a process called glacial plucking, which left it steep on one side, but gradual on the other. But of course, before heading back down, we had to take some time to enjoy the scenery from the summit of the mountain. 
As we gazed out, we were awestruck by the stunning scenery of the American Northeast. Now, we decided to sit and rest a bit and enjoy a small lunch. These are from Bruce. Last minute, he just sent us a big box of snacks. I got dark chocolate mint. <laughs> yeah, you can have that. Okay. Unflavored for me. So this is your first time in Acadia, mm -hmm. but you've been to Maine before. I have been. So this is kind of more of a viral trail. It's just one of those that it's kind of accessible to a lot of people because it's only about a mile, mile and a half long, but it's got a high reward because you feel like you've actually done a lot mm -hmm. to get up here. I do feel that dopamine and endorphins <laughs> running through my brain. I feel like picnicking on a mountain like this is a very New England thing for some reason. <laughs> oh. So Bruce wrote on the back of all of these his name so that we knew who sent it. But he also wrote on here, why did I agree to do this? <laughs> That's your line. Oh. <laughs> we took in the ocean scenery one more time before hiking out. We had made it to the top but there is still more to explore. If it's not gonna rain, it certainly feels like rain. Woo. Yeah, let's keep going. Yeah. Granite can become slick in the rain. So we continued into an area full of distinct looking trees. So you're also asking about beaches earlier? Yeah. All around this us. Is, so this is, these are beaches, not, not birch, not aspen. Not birch, not aspen. And not maple now. Not maple. Um, you noob, not just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just slap me. Both aspens and birch have this whitish bark, but you can see how the texture is much more peeling, you know? On beach. On, on birch. You said this was beach. Yeah. Said oh, I said beach? beach. You noob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, this is all birch. This is all birch trees. I was looking at it, I was like, this isn't beach. But I was like, Andrew's the expert. <laughs> okay, so the bowl. That's where we're going. 0.2 miles. Yep. We're going to go this way. Let's go. This section of the trail had more plants growing, including goldenrods and hardwood trees. Weird 20th. This is surreal because you see this pond out of nowhere, but it's like. Not at the ground level. It's truly up in the mountains here. It was fairly cool out, but because of the high humidity, it almost felt warm as we made our way down the mountain. We approached the lake, enjoying the view of the placid water nestled among pine trees. Like Walden from the day before, this felt like its own special secluded pocket of tranquility and transcendentalism. rocky shores of the lake, dead logs lay near lush vegetation. The colors of autumn were sprinkled amid the evergreen trees. The pond seemed to swirl with both ends and beginnings, a dialectic of rest and renewal. Like our road trip so far, there was quiet, harmonious peace mixed in with vibrant extravagance. So far, we had enjoyed the luxury of hotels and the decadence of delicious food. But we had also made a pilgrimage to Thoreau's cabin in the woods and scrambled along granite boulders in Acadia. We headed further down the mountain to once again experience the comforts of modern life. But not before taking this last look at the beautiful forest that surrounded us. Cordinarius mushrooms sprouted from the rich soil beneath, 
beech trees grew tall and surrounded the easy, winding path below. These stairs are very convenient. Man, yeah. I hope they have them on Katahdin. No, right? No. As we dropped in elevation, Andrew saw even more trees growing nearby. So along with the iconic paper birch trees, I think I'm seeing some yellow birch trees growing in this area. We also saw a lot of striped maple all around us. And there's also aspen trees that have actually grown bigger. And when they grow that big, they don't have this like iconic smooth bark of an aspen, but they actually become kind of rougher. I like how they remind you every tenth of a mile that you're there. <laughs> it's good to have that encouragement. You're doing great, buddy. Only 0.4 miles left. In this section of the woods, we saw even more signs of autumn among the maple leaves. We followed small, winding brooks and eventually found our way back to the trailhead. From here, we headed to the nearby beach to see the ocean from up close. seems so much bigger and more imposing than it did from afar. Kind of huge, actually. This is another one of those instances where it feels like you're in like a giant theater or something in a museum. It's, it's so like weird to the brain to see this. One thing that's uh, funny to me, having been recently gone to Manitou, is the air. You noticeably, you're like, yep, that's like ocean salty sea dog air. <laughs> it's kind of funny how smells trigger memories and now I'm suddenly thrown back to all the times I've been to an ocean before. This is a little stinkier than usual though. It smells like how our beard smelled after we ate that lobster. <laughs> the ocean really did seem impossibly vast. We stared at the turbulent waves in awe of the impressive sight in front of us. Every time I come to a beach that's an actual like beach on the ocean, I just have to stand in awe and admire not just the power and the beauty of the waves, but just like the landscapes that surround it. It's not just about the beach or the ocean, but it's really a picture as a whole. You just gotta take it all in. We took a moment to really be present, to really look with intent at everything around us and appreciate the natural wonders for what they are. Afterwards, we headed back towards the parking lot where Andrew spotted some plants. So growing in this parking lot area, there's actually a tree called ash which used to be really common in Ohio, but a lot of them got wiped out by the emerald ash borer. It's just wild seeing these growing normally with no diseases. So here, there's some fruits of the roses growing. Uh, these are called rose hips. I don't know if these would be like the tastiest ones to eat, but you could actually eat these. And here is a really beautiful example of Tramides versicolor, also known as turkey tail fungus. Whenever I look at this, I think of like that Japanese woodblock painting of the waves but you can actually take these and cut them off and make like a tea or a soup out of them. We got in the car and headed to another site called Thunder Hole. Somewhere along this rocky shore was a crevice that makes a thundering noise when water crashes into it. Growing nearby were more rose bushes with brilliantly pink flowers. And the flowers weren't the only thing colorful in this landscape. Even though it's severely overcast, I'm surprised how colorful this all is. With the blue and the red and the orange, 
You also have all this like green seaweed kind of clinging to the rocks down there. It's really cool. It is funny, these rocks, like, you go to amusement parks that try to replicate these rocks, and it, looking back, they actually do a better job than I yeah. thought they did. Well, I guess that's the devil's hole down there. Yeah. Acadia can be a quiet, calm place to visit, but not today. The windy, overcast weather and the loud crashing of the waves gave the landscape a perilous feeling. But now, we were headed out of the blustery wind and towards warmth and a wealth of food. We made our way to the Jordan Pond House for an early dinner, and we found a great parking spot. Look at this luck, look at this luck, Thomas. We just need everyone to suddenly fall ill who's in line ahead of us. <laughs> well, good thing we're in a pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> right, so growing here is just a full-on apple tree. These are really beautiful apples. There's some on the ground, and I'm just gonna take a little nibble Mm. That is actually delicious. About an hour wait for Andrew's lunch. Long line, but it's okay. You want to try some apples in the meantime? They taste really good. I don't know if they have extra seating further down, but I think if it weren't foggy, you could see the pond there. Because I, I just remember as a kid eating here outside and like seeing the pond. And we did a hike also to see the pond from like another overview or something, but yeah, it's very nostalgic memory, although it's completely different weather today. <laughs> While we waited for our table, we decided to walk along the trail that encircles Jordan Pond. We didn't have enough time to go all the way around, but already it was striking how calm this freshwater pond was compared to the powerful ocean. Just off the trail was an old stone wall and concrete structure. After inspecting the area, we headed back to the trail, where Andrew found a variety of trees growing along the pond. So this trail next to Jordan Pond has a lot of interesting trees, largely conifer trees, um, but there's also alder trees like this one right here. Um, I've also been seeing fir trees like this one here, and spruce trees like this, eastern white pine, and uh, some cypress trees that grow next to the water. They're usually water-loving plants. Shrouded in fog, the pond had a celestial, otherworldly look to it. We headed back to the house and saw more interesting plants along the way. So there's also all these really vibrant red berries growing on these shrubs all along this pond. Apparently this is something called winterberry holly. It doesn't really look like the holly you think of with like Christmas, but uh, it is in the same, uh, same family or genus as that. Back at the house, we lounged around a bit more as we waited for our table. While we waited, we bumped into a couple of our viewers. Yeah, this is Haley and Alex. Excited hey. to see you. Say hi to our family, our, all of our people back in Ithaca. Yeah, oh, awesome. Yes. <laughs> now, it was time to eat. We headed downstairs and made our way inside the restaurant. We were now being transported from a quiet world of natural beauty to a cornucopia of indulgent gluttony. Years ago, Andrew and I had visited this place, which is best known for its fluffy popover bread. And so, we started off our meal with some coffee and cream and hot tea. It's tea. <laughs> Wanting to unwind, Thomas also got a blueberry cocktail. Oh, it's great. <laughs> Get a little jealous. Now, it was time to try the popovers, accompanied by warm butter and fruit jam. So when I was a kid, me and Brian came here on a family vacation 
and my parents were telling us about these popovers and they're like, oh, they're so good. They're like cream puffs. And when we got these, I was so disappointed. I was like, this is just bread with jam. Like, <laughs> what's cream puff about this? But now I see that it's like, it was very, it's a lot puffier than I remember. It's very good. So when I was a kid, I just couldn't appreciate the airiness and the lightness of the popover. But I definitely see the appeal now. I see why it's called a popover now, because it's like a muffin, but it pops over the, the edge. You see how it like, boop? I didn't realize that. I'm glad you, descri you did not describe it as sweet. Oh, this is really good. It's good. It's good bread. <laughs> this is 100 times better than I remember it being. <laughs> Brian also had some cold blueberry soda. All right, let's try it a little bit. Just right out of the bottle. Mm -hmm. You want to try some? Yeah. Oh, that's great. I love that color too. <laughs> For the main course, Andrew had vegan risotto. I had the meatloaf sandwich. Brian had crab cake and lobster bisque. And Thomas had shepherd's pie with clam chowder. Mm. This is actually good. <laughs> Very good, yeah. Nice and buttery. We weren't sure how this vegan risotto would be, but it turned out to be one of the best dishes. Look at the size of this bison meatloaf. That's pretty good, yeah. Uh, that looks great. It's like bison size. <laughs> mm. You guys have to take a bite of this. <laughs> All right, got my crab cake here. Mm. I don't know really know how to describe crab cake, but it has the taste that I remember. <laughs> The chowder is quite good. It's a little smaller than I hoped, but very buttery, very creamy. <laughs> yeah, that's quite good. I take it the risotto was actually the right choice? I'm full after the risotto. <laughs> Shepherd's pie was not the right choice. It was way too little. What are you eating there? My good, my good friend was called Robert, who gave me his uh, meatloaf sandwich because he's a good friend. I'm doing great. I've got just enough room for a popover Sunday. <laughs> really nice on there. Excalibur. All right, I'll take the oh, first okay. bite here. Ready? Yep. Now that reminds me of a cream puff right there. Oh, man, if we had just gotten this when we were kids, this literally would have been what we wanted. I'm trying not to I'm just like digging like I'm trying not to 50 percent of the ice cream, up, but like I'm losing his popover to. while he's doing it. I feel like. I don't know what Tom is doing here. <laughs> I have the worst position. You had it, and then you here we started go. going deeper and deeper. <laughs> I'm not giving any pop over. You know what? I'm just going. <laughs> <laughs> that is a cream puff right there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I need What's happening with Thomas? <laughs> I don't know. He like he had a piece of cream puff off, and then he started going. <laughs> look, 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 look at this cavernous holy name. <laughs> that was good, man. Yeah. My belly feels like a popover right now. <laughs> After a filling meal, we headed to the gift shop to browse around. <laughs> well, everybody's gone. This place was so crowded earlier. Yeah, well, quiet. I have made the transformation into a popover myself, so... If anything, the popovers are redeemed in my memory. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Red Dead, actually. Redemption. <laughs> Pop top redemption. <laughs> Man, I still remember when we went on road trips with our parents. They had the gigantic mess. Oh yeah, dude. dude. Oh yeah, we'd have to go triple A to like. They would highlight the whole path. Yeah. My dad still uses a TomTom -tom GPS, and he has a Q-tip to use the touchscreen, <laughs> so that he doesn't get it dirty. That's so your dad. It's unbelievable. <laughs> That is so funny. <laughs> the popovers had left us in a nostalgic mood, conjuring up family vacations we took as kids. We were about to have a family vacation of our own. We were headed just north of Bar Harbor proper to a rustic little cottage. This evening was one of luxury on top of luxury. 
We pulled into the parking area in the early evening and hopped out of the car. Thomas went to the office to check us in while we milled about. I'm asleep in this cottage like I'm an old pilgrim on the trail. <laughs> I feel good. I got a full belly, full of popover. <laughs> Thomas emerged and pointed us to our cabin. Yeah. All right, let's go. A <laughs> Kramer entry right there. Dude, this is nice! Whoa, this is sweet. Yeah, I think we should just cancel the rest of the trip, see if... Uh, uh, Cottage and... archive, let's go. <laughs> oh, this is like a... Beach home. Wow. <laughs> Literally. This is better than my own house. <laughs> is Good it... laugh love, baby, right? <laughs> Does this say it? No. <laughs> I feel like I'm a in a dollhouse or something. Yeah. Oh, the TV swells. <laughs> May your trails be crooked and winding, leading to the most amazing view. <laughs> we may take that couch. Uh, we may sleep on that. Who's we? Oh, I may sleep on that. So this is a full mess. Like, this is a full... Don't you speak for me! <laughs> so this is a full queen-size bed. Easily fit two people in here. This is a twin bed. No, this is bigger than twin. No, nah, that's a twin. It's at least the size of a jack. Hey, I vote Andrew gets his own bed. He's the most annoying to sleep next to. <laughs> what? Maybe Robbie should get his own room. <laughs> I'm fine with that, too. <laughs> well, if someone sleeps out here, then two people... Well, if Andrew sleeps out here, then someone else will get there. Why am I sleeping now? He's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, we'll just take the stuff out of here and Andrew can sleep down here. <laughs> just crawled up underneath the sink. <laughs> oh, yeah. They force you to, like, lean back. Feeling relaxed yet, Thomas? <laughs> Getting there. <laughs> Decadence. <laughs> make a joke about all we need is just like someone to feed us lobster but not anymore <laughs> i'm all lobstered out <laughs> actually i could eat lobster rolls till the end of my day <laughs> although this civilized living isn't our usual mo we really were filled with a sense of relaxation similar to that found around the campfire in the woods a big part of it was feeling fulfilled after our hiking as well as the camaraderie of having each other's company but the beautiful oceanside scenery definitely didn't hurt either. We all rested and lounged around as dusk set in. Later, Andrew and I went to buy a few treats to enjoy the rest of the night. So what we get, Thomas? We're getting some wine and cheese. Sweet blueberry wine and some lagers. I think tonight we're gonna do some drunken virtual reality. <laughs> Back at the cottage, the night's shenanigans were just getting started. I see why people with more money like to have summer homes. <laughs> this is what it's all about though, isn't it? Not doing any work. <laughs> <laughs> no hiking, just post-hike meals. <laughs> While we enjoyed the night air, we opened up the drinks we had acquired. So, we've got a Park Premium Lager, uh, <laughs> and this is brewed in South Portland in Maine. This is Winterport Winery. This is a blueberry wine. Oh, there's no bunghole in this bottle. I thought there was going to be one. <laughs> That's that what actually what it's called, right? Bunghole is the hole in like a barrel. Oh, right. <laughs> a bunghole. <laughs> About to get goofy up in here. Cheers. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Ding, 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 ding. Mm, not bad, not bad. Oh, that's good beer. This is like main go uh, main cheddar, apparently. <laughs> enjoyment of things, it's not just about the base enjoyment of it, but it's also the things you associate it with it. Even with backpacking, it's like, there's part of it where you're pretending to be some pioneer or whatever. Mm. Backpacking will make you realize how something like this is actually luxury. Like just having a, dry thing to sit on and drinks. <laughs> you know what that is? It's creating your own happiness. When you put yourself in a situation where simple things become super fun and mm. enjoyable, you're literally doing something to create that. For some people, going to a place and having wine served to you with cheese on a platter is something they would enjoy. But for us, it's, yeah. it's going out and getting our own wine, getting our own cheese after a hike. 
sitting in the chairs with like this kind of freedom. You know what moment is speaking to me? It's a great example of what Brian's talking about. So we got off that water-soaked mountain in Big Sur, mm. and we got some beers, pulled out some charcuterie. We're sitting there on that green spot, looking out in the Pacific Ocean. It was like the sunniest day in the whole world. Yeah. It's funny how full circle we've come, from the Pacific to the Atlantic. Oh yeah, this is a long time coming. Cheers to Cheers that. Cheers to that. <laughs> <laughs> it's raining. Mm -hmm. Barely, but I can definitely feel it. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Beer Venture Bar Kind. <laughs> Bar Venture Beer Kind. <laughs> For being a close knit group of friends, allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> we don't actually do things like this that often. No. Sure. Like the drinking aspect, at least. We do sit and talk a lot. <laughs> I'm looking forward to feeling good about myself. <laughs> anyway, so. Let me, let me be on it. So let, 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 let me tell you what I mean by that. It's like, it's, it's, it. What's so funny about that? I look forward to feeling self-validated again when I go up Mount Katahdin. Oh, yeah, because yeah. Mount Katahdin, in my mind at least, has been the hardest hike of my life. I'm kind of nervous about this because it's going to be a tough hike. But if I can do this, I'm going to feel so good about myself. Me and Brian won't feel good about ourselves at all. We're just gonna <laughs> canoe peacefully on a lake. <laughs> no, for me, me, for me, That's this whole good. trip is the feel good moment because yeah, I've, yeah. I've been feeling a little burnout at work and I was like, man, I need some time off. And then I've been doing the diet and now I'm just like, I'm eating mm. popover sundaes and mm. lobster rolls. It's yeah. just like, this whole trip is just like, can Brian's we, already earned the reward. <laughs> can we just talk, Brian, you look great. Looking good, Brian. You, you look, look great, great too, buddy. <laughs> Brian, you look like Luke Kang, man. <laughs> if I if I take my hair and I do this, the, sh the low ponytail, oh, I, look, I look like um, Stephen Chow. Got oh, Stephen yeah. Chow hair. Oh, yeah. Dude, hey. we should uh, we should cosplay as Luke Kang and Kung Lao. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Well, hey. here's to the rest of the trip. I set some things up for you guys. Business Thomas, back in action. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas is like, let me choose now to organize the room. I'm not that drunk. I'm not going to fling your controllers all over the place. No, but I do. And I'm not even drunk when I do. <laughs> That's because you're dope. I know. <laughs> After a goofy, fun-filled night, it was finally time for us to head to bed. We had traveled nearly a thousand miles, and we were almost at the farthest end of the Northeast, but there was still much more to come. Thank you very much for watching. Please consider subscribing to be notified for the next video when we visit Baxter State Park to canoe in the foothills of Mount Katahdin. And if you really like the video, consider checking out patreon.com slash adventure, where you can get early access to our videos, bloopers, commentaries, and exclusive live streams. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.